Up next, one of uh, McCain and Palin's rowdiest back to Harbaugh. This is going to be a treat. Christopher Buckley, a conservative columnist and the son of the pillar of conservatives himself, William F. Buckley Jr., endorsed Barack Obama. He wrote an online posting headlined, Sorry, Dad, I'm voting for Obama. It was on the site of the Daily Beast. Then the National Review, to which he contributes a column in which he was founded, of course, by his father, was deluged with angry emails and subscribers threatening to cancel. So thinking it uh, was the stand-up thing to do, Christopher Buckley offered to resign. His offer was briskly accepted. And in a posting today, Buckley describes how he left the National Review magazine that his father had founded and which he's still a part owner because he's voting for Obama. He's also the author of a great new book, Supreme Courtship. Sir, thank you for not Sir. smoking. Thank you for smoking. I mean, you've done it all. Uh, so is it, does it feel unpleasant to be separated from the conservative herd these days? Well, um, sure. This is this is by way, I suppose, of a of a uh, of a family family feud. I, I went out of my way. Look, I, let me say, I love National Review. I have the fondest feelings for National Review. It's the magazine my dad founded, and this is what's happened is profoundly saddening to me. I wrote a posting, I guess they're called, uh, on Tina Brown's new website, The Daily Beast, giving what I thought were some, uh, well, anyway, my arguments uh, in favor of Barack Obama and against John McCain. <clears throat> what I went out of my way to do it in The Daily Beast and not in National Review where I had, have been writing the back page column because I didn't want to put NR in an embarrassing situation. Well, they were quite literally flooded with very angry uh, stuff. Cancel my subscription. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to give money. So I thought the decent thing to do would be to um, uh, give NR the chance to distance itself from me. And so I, I, I tendered a sort of a pro forma resignation. I said, if, if this will help, here it is. And <laughs> they accepted. <laughs> I think that's what Randolph Churchill did once, as <laughs> Chancellor yeah, of the yeah, Exchequer, be, thinking the same be result. Be careful of, of who you offer a resignation to. They may just accept it. But it's, it's, you know, it's, it's saddening to me that the discourse has become so calcified, uh, arteriosclerotic, to use a WFB word, right. that it, it comes to something like this. My dad, the late, and as you generously put it, very great, WFB was a guy who, as as an editor, as a as a columnist, as a host of a, of a TV show, would let you say pretty much anything you wanted as long as you presented an argument. I presented an argument, but there was a. Uh, uh, you know, uh, some sort of profound sense of betrayal. And let me say, right uh, for, for the record, the only reason my political opinions are of any interest to anyone is because of my last name, a name which I inherited. I'm a hack novelist. No, you're not. You're you know, a great my, novelist. I, and you've written I'm some not, great movies now. You know, and I want to say this. I want to quote to prove that you are not a hack. Here's some language from you in this posting. Quote, this campaign has changed John McCain and has made him inauthentic. A once first-class temperament has become irascible and snarly. His positions change and lack of co and lack coherence. He makes unrealistic promises, such as balancing the federal budget by the end of my first term. Who really believes that? So you're, you're pretty tough. Here's what you write about Barack Obama, which I find fascinating. Obama has in him, I think, despite his sometimes airy-fairy, we are the people we've been waiting for, silly rhetoric, the potential to be a good, perhaps even great president. Let's start with the positive. Your innermost feelings as a father, husband, American about why you prefer to see a President Obama to a President McCain. Well, I, among other things, um, I've read his books, and uh, this is a first-class temperament and a first-class mind. I, I, I said in that same posting, I guess I'm getting the hang of the lingo, that uh, he's a lefty, and I am not a lefty. I'm a small government conservative, although those days, <laughs> that water is well under the bridge. But I sense in him, uh, first, I don't think he's going to be able to govern as a lefty. 
lefty because if he does, then I think he's going to reap, as I put it, a whirlwind that'll make Katrina look like a summer, uh, balmy summer uh, zephyr. But I, I sense in this guy a, a, a first-class mind who will, uh, who, who might just do very smart things. And so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it all on black, like as I guess they would say in the casinos. Well, let me ask you about what, I mean, you're not your dad, you're not an ideologue that way, a professional ideologue, you're a writer, you're a creative writer, but let me ask you this about uh, what a conservative thinks today, because we just have this bailout now, uh, these numbers are unimaginable, uh, almost a trillion dollars of federal money going into bank up, uh, to back up these banks and financial institutions, intervention like we've never seen, and then we just had Congressman Lundgren on saying, big government is a Democrat solution, well, what do we got on the front pages now? We have a bipartisan solution, which is big government. Yeah, the uh, so so much for the conservative revolution. I mean, we uh, look at the last eight years. Look, I voted for George W. Bush in, in 2000 on the grounds that he was a uh, well con a conservative, small C conservative. My dad always distinguished between capital large C and small C, and he, and he thought W was a small C. He has in eight years doubled the national debt, enacted an an, an enormous in in entitlement, uh, the, the Medicare uh, drug benefit, uh, has gotten this mired in a, uh, a spect in an ill-premised and ill-waged war. I speak not of the, uh, of the brave men and women over there, but of the very arrogant men who got us into this mess. It's, uh, and, and government gets bigger and bigger, and he now leaves us with a de facto nationalization of our largest banks. I think the only good news in this is for the heirs of James Buchanan, frankly, who must be going, yes. Well, I'm going to have to study up on James Buchanan, the immediate predecessor well, of Lincoln. Is, uh, but... James Buchanan is, is uh, generally considered to be the worst president we have ever well, had. Well, let me so, say in uh, his defense, he's the only uh, Pennsylvanian to be president, <laughs> sadly <laughs> enough. Anyway, thank you, Chris Buckley. Christopher Buckley, author of the new book, Supreme Courtship. Up next, one of uh, McCain and Palin's rowdiest